Welcome back to my little homestead on the internet where I share with you nourishing meal prep, a little bit of food prepping, gardening, and anything else that comes with running a home with seven people in it. I want to welcome you to my channel, Rouse Rising. If you are new here, I am Katie. Go ahead and grab yourself your drink of choice, a cup of tea or a cup of joe, maybe a glass of water, because today I am sharing with you a Women of Faith collaboration. This collaboration is with four other channels, and we are each bringing to you a delicious homemade casserole and sweet bread. I want you to check down in this video's description, go to each one of their channels and see what they have to share with you. Darlene is the creator of Super at 60 and she shares with her audience and subscribers delicious homemade recipes. Robin from Faith Plus Flower, she loves to share home cleaning hacks and I love her oven cleaning hack. I gotta give that a try myself. Janelle from Parsnips and Parsimony shares daily family vlog adventures where they make food from scratch, they work around on their homestead, and they remodel their farmhouse. Then there's Katie from Heritage Ways. What a joy she is to watch on her channel. She likes to share from the comfort of her cozy home, old fashioned family values and vlogs about how she runs her household. For this collaboration, each one of us is going to be sharing with you a delicious casserole recipe and a sweetbread. And be sure that you subscribe to these channels because they are so inspiring to the modern homemaker. These women have lifted me up through this collaboration and I'm so grateful to have met them through YouTube. What would I do without this community, honestly? For this collaboration, each one of us is going to be sharing with you a delicious casserole recipe and a sweetbread. Today in my video, I'm going to share with you a hunter's pie, it's my take on shepherd's pie, and a sourdough bread that has cranberries and apricots in it. One of my family favorites. I'm going to share with you my basic sourdough loaf recipe and how I sweeten it up. If you are looking for how to make sourdough bread, I have a whole sourdough recipes playlist. And on that playlist, I teach you how to make starter from scratch. I teach you how to make sourdough bread from scratch. And I also teach you how to bulk batch bake six to eight loaves of bread at once so that you can do your baking once a month, once a week and freeze your bread for later. So my standard sourdough loaf is gonna be sweetened up today with some delicious dried fruit, and I'm gonna share that recipe with you as well. For the sourdough bread, I am doubling this recipe, so you are gonna see me use a lot more ingredients than I'm gonna be telling you. So in this uh, recipe, I'm using fresh milled wheat berries. You can use milled bread flour from the store. Um, and I like to use half white, half wheat when I make my sourdough bread. So for this recipe, you're gonna start out the night before with your leaven. And to make your leaven, you're gonna do one tablespoon of your hungry starter. You're gonna use 75 grams of flour and 75 grams of water. Give those a mix, cover your dish, and let it sit on the counter overnight. The very next day, you are gonna to add to your leaven 475 grams of water, and then you're gonna add in 700 grams of your bread flour. Again, you can use half all-purpose, half whole wheat bread flour, whatever you have on hand. You just wanna make sure that it is equivalent to 700 grams. We are gonna mix this up into a shaggy dough, and then we're gonna let it auto-laze for 30 minutes. That helps the dough absorb all the water. And once it does that, I'm gonna do all of the kneading in my stand mixer, but I also prefer a stretch and fold method that is in the bowl. Every 30 minutes, you stretch and fold the dough four times, you let it rest 30 minutes, and then you stretch and fold the dough again four times. So once I have my shaggy dough and I let it auto-laze, 
I'm going to be adding in a salted water. For this salted water, we are going to use one tablespoon of salt or 20 grams of real sea salt, as well as 50 grams of water. We're going to try to dissolve the salt in that. Not all of the salt will dissolve, but that's okay. You just want to have like a salty water, but make sure that you get all of the salt into your dough. So we're going to squish this salt into the dough really well and get it in there to absorb. And then we're going to start our stretch and fold. At first, the dough is going to be really loose, but as the mixer mixes it or as you stretch and fold it manually with your hands, the dough is going to come together really nicely and the gluten is going to start to form. Now, right before the last stretch and fold, if you're doing this by hand, you want to do it six times. If you're doing it in the mixer, you can just run the mixer, mixer for about 10 minutes um, and then let it rest for 30 minutes and run it for 10 more minutes let it rest for 30 minutes and run it for 10 more minutes. I did three cycles of that in my mixer. Uh, but like I said, if you're doing the stretch and fold method, you want to do it six times total. Uh, so before my very last mix, I'm going to add in one cup of dried fruit. I am using dried apricots and craisins. I'm using half and half. So for this doubled recipe, I used one cup of apricot chopped up into little pieces and then one cup of craisins and I just threw them in there. Once your dough is all mixed up, you're going to allow it to rest for 30 minutes and then we're going to divide it into sections. Now each section is going to weigh around 700 grams, but if you just divide it in half, that'll be fine. In this video, I'm dividing it into four quarters because I doubled the recipe. This is going to give you uh, the basic recipe is going to give you two loaves of bread. Today I am making the four loaves of bread. So next we are going to do the rough shape and then we are going to do our final shaping. These go into floured bannetons and then I wrap them in plastic and put them in the refrigerator overnight. This is important that you retard the dough by refrigerating it overnight. That's going to slow the fermentation process. It's going to give you a nice cool dough that when you throw it into the oven, it's going to have a beautiful oven spring and you're going to have that nice, lovely, crusty loaf that everybody desires. So my tip and my secret is to let this slow ferment in the refrigerator overnight, get your dough nice and cold, and that's going to create your oven spring. So this is going to go into a preheated 500 degree oven for 15 minutes, and then we turn the heat down to 425 for 10 minutes. You take the lid off of your Dutch oven and you cook it for the last 10 minutes. Mmm, it smells really good. Oh, I needed to form my gluten a little bit better. Wow! So this is my fresh milled wheat and I haven't made sourdough very many times since I started using that. But yeah, that's gonna go in and cook a little bit more. Okay, so I have baked sourdough for nearly eight years now. And I just started dabbling with fresh milled wheat this past uh, six months. And I need to work more on the gluten formation. If you have a recommendation down below, how can I get the gluten better? Um, maybe I just need to work it more. Somebody recommended adding citric acid, I believe, to the dough, uh, like a little bit on the end of a knife. Um, and apparently that helps the gluten and fresh milled wheat uh, form better. But I know that this bread is going to taste delicious, even though it doesn't have the best gluten formation. But I do know that it's fermented well and it's nice and bubbly and airy on the inside. It's just the air pockets didn't hold together when they expanded. So that's why you've got this um, cracking and bursting. Also, the crust was probably a little bit firmer on these than I would normally do. Um, again, I'm experimenting with the fresh milled wheat. So usually you score it and scoring it prevents it from doing this cracking. But if you don't have a good enough gluten formation, your bread is not gonna hold together very well. So it's gonna be a little bit more crumbly, um, a little bit more uh, like this. So that's okay though, because like I said, the flavor is there. This is gonna taste delicious. This is gonna be so good with my Hunter's Pie. My hunter's pie is a play on uh, shepherd's pie, but because I'm using elk meat, I'm calling it hunter's pie. You can call it um, pasture pie or 
uh, let's see, rancher's pie if you're using cow, or there's different, you know, there's all different variations. So we're gonna get to that and I'm gonna show you guys how I make that. You're going to see in the video that I am doubling it up, but feel free to use these basic measurements that I'm going to go over right here with you right now. So we're going to start out with some kind of ground meat, one large onion. You can use an eight ounce mixed bag of veg, but because I'm doubling this recipe, I'm going to use the whole 16 ounces of frozen mixed vegetables. Also one cup of your broth of choice. You're also gonna want some Worcestershire sauce to add some flavor to this, as well as some garlic, some herbs, and some salt. We're gonna use some flour to thicken this gravy, and we are gonna have a delicious hunter's pie. So to get started, we're gonna chop up this onion and get it sauteed really well. Next, we're gonna add our ground meat, whether it's elk, lamb, beef, some kind of bird, Whatever you have, you want one pound of it with your one large onion. To that, we're gonna be adding all of our delicious seasonings. You can do one tablespoon of garlic. I prefer fresh garlic, but you can also do about a teaspoon of dried garlic. You can do one tablespoon of herbs or about a teaspoon and a half of dried herbs. I'm using fresh today, fresh from my garden. And then when you salt and season your food, you wanna make sure that you are using a quality salt and today I'm using real salt from Redmond's and I have a discount code and a link down below in this video's description for you. With Redmond's real salt you know that you are getting something that is unrefined and full of vital minerals to nourish your body. All right so after we saute the meat and the onions I'm going to go ahead and add all of the seasonings and then I'm gonna sprinkle all of that with some flour. The flour is gonna cook in the pan and soak up all of the fat and all of the juices from the meat. And once it does that, we add in the broth. So in this video, I'm using about a cup of broth. If I had a bigger pan, I would add two cups of broth and I would really make this a very thick, abundant gravy. So you can add more broth or less broth, the same with the flour. It just depends on how much you wanna stretch this. The more gravy you make, the more you can stretch this meal. So once everything is mixed together, I am going to pour this into my casserole dish and on top you can do one of two things. So today I'm gonna to use sweet potatoes. I am mashing these sweet potatoes up with a stick of butter and I'm also gonna do a dash of cinnamon to them and about a half a cup of brown sugar. This makes the sweet potatoes a little bit sweet to go along with your savory meal, but we spread everything on top of the casserole and put it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes to make sure everything cooks up nicely and all the flavors meld together. For the final touches on this meal, I'm gonna make a vinaigrette for this house salad. I am using apple cider vinegar, olive oil, and my secret recipe is some strawberry jam or jelly, whatever kind of fruit jelly you have. Mix all those together, a little salt and pepper, and you have a delicious vinaigrette for your summer and fall salads. I'm gonna throw a little bit of goat cheese on top of this to complement the flavors. Oh my goodness, this meal was to die for. I hope that you give this a try. I'm going to slice up this sourdough bread and slather it in some delicious fatty butter. Oh my goodness, so good. So we are going to serve this up for the family. And tonight, everybody's going to eat everything. There's no restrictions tonight on this homemade meal. We can all enjoy, and I think it's a bit of a cheat meal for me and Aaron with the tomatoes and some other things, but I hope you guys liked this. I hope you liked watching it. This was a family favorite meal. We all really enjoyed it. And because I made two casserole dishes, I doubled my recipe. I was able to put one in the freezer for another night. And I was also able to freeze two bowls of the cranberry apricot sourdough bread to make my life a little bit easier on another night. If you all are looking for some new content and some new channels to watch, 
definitely check out Super at 60. We have Faith Plus 4. We have Heritage Ways and Parsnips and Parsimony. All of their videos for this collaboration are linked down below in this video's description. I want to say thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed your cup of tea, your hydration with your glass of water, or your caffeination with your cup of coffee. I enjoyed hanging out with you so much. If you haven't already, make sure that you click the subscribe button and you hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date with all of my latest uploads and recipes. I would love to have you join as part of the Rouse Rising family. If you want to support my channel even further, I would love to have you join as a Rouse Rising member. You can check that out on my YouTube homepage, Rouse Rising. Leave a comment down below. What do you think of this recipe? And are you going to try out this sourdough bread? It's so good. I love it. And I know that it doesn't have like a lot of sugar or anything else in it, but the fruit just gives just the right amount of sweetness. And I hope that you love it and your family loves it as much as we did. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye.